So if you can see ghosts, I asked the woman, shellacking my nails, why are you doing this for a living? You try, lady. Put out an ad, see what you get. Susan, my manicure, snorted. I tried, and I got three calls. A family of seven who tried to baptize me. A schizo who tried to stab me with a needle. And the guy in the hotel room. Well, what he had under his bathrobe might have been pretty much invisible, but it didn't make it a ghost. See you in three weeks, I asked when she finished. <laughs> Don't think so, Susan wrinkled her nose. No offense, but you've got the stink of death about you. She hesitated. Either that, or Tiffany microwaved fish for lunch again. I thought things would get better after a dead guy made my mobster husband disappear, and I moved to the Midwest with my son, Ralphie Jr. I can't specify the place, but it's a town with a dying mall where unhappily married couples go to sip half-priced cocktails at Applebee's. And the hottest action on a Saturday night is cruising the Walmart parking lot with the radio blaring and the windows down. If you think that narrows it down, well, good luck. Right, Ralphie Jr. He's had some um, trouble adjusting to school. And it's no wonder you drop one F-bomb around here and people act like you just took a shit in their Wonder Bread and mayonnaise sandwich or something. I mean, the closest thing to an international community is one guy from Paris. Paris, Kentucky. What was I saying? Right, Ralphie Jr. The school. Now, Ralphie Jr. getting picked on is nothing new, you know? Kids can be so cruel, so petty, so prejudiced. And believe me, my little Ralphie deserves every bit of it. Last time I got called for a parent conference was because a kid was picking on Ralphie. It turned out that the kid hit Ralphie Jr. because my sweet little boy took his sandwich at lunch. Every day. For a year. I would have hit him too. What worries me is that Ralphie has made a friend, Ryan. Ralphie Jr. won't shut up about him. Ryan's amazing at hide-and-seek. It's like he disappears. You should have seen how high Ryan jumped today at recess. Nobody picks on me when I hang out with Ryan. The way Ralphie Jr. was talking, I was imagining this Ryan kid to be, I don't know, some kind of miniature Hulk picking Ralphie Jr. up from school a few days ago. I got a glimpse of him. Ryan looked as thin and weak as a gas station coffee. One of those smudge-faced puffy-eyed, pale kids who sits in the back and never says anything. He was carrying a scuffed-up teddy bear beneath one arm. Okay, so that was weird. But not as weird as our conversation in the car. The substitute fell and broke her ankle today, Ralphie Jr. explained, cheerfully, as though nothing could have pleased him more. She shouldn't have told Ryan to put away his teddy bear. I guess she didn't know. Didn't know what, I wondered. But I kept my mouth shut. Because I knew that Ralphie Jr., just like his dearly departed father, would spill all those secrets that he was trying so hard to keep if I just stayed quiet and let him do it. I was thinking, Ralphie Jr. began, in the same trying not to be nonchalant tone my dead husband used to put on, just before asking me if he could use my credit card to put a down payment on a boat or some other sketchy thing. Do you think I could go over to Ryan's house sometime? Like, today, maybe? The apple didn't fall far from the shit for brains tree, it seemed. I groaned and I asked him for the address. Truth was, I wanted to meet this Ryan kid's parents, partially to see if they were psychos and partially to see if that bland little boy happened to have a hot, rich, single dad. If our kids already got along, that was a start, right? Well, I was still daydreaming about this Midwestern surfer millionaire dad when we pulled into Ryan's driveway. Early 2000s brick ranch house, no lights in the windows. The yard was a little small, but I cared more about the master bedroom closet space anyway. Walking up the driveway holding Ralphie Jr.'s hand, I wondered if Ryan's dad and I would like the same wines. We rang the bell. Twice. No answer. I guess your friend isn't home, I sighed. And his dad isn't either. But as I loosened my grip on Ralphie Jr.'s hand and turned to check on the car... Something happened that chilled my blood. The door of the house flew open and Ralphie Jr.'s fingers slipped through mine. By the time I spun back around, it was like the house had swallowed him up. Hey! I pounded on the locked door. Hey! Rafael Palumbo Jr., you open this door right now, mister! Ryan, are you in there? Anybody? Hey! Mother's instinct, I guess, but the thought of what might be happening to my son inside that dark, silent house was driving me crazy. I bruised my shoulder, slamming all of my 125 pounds against the door again and again. Maybe only a few minutes had passed, but it felt like hours. 
I looked around for something to smash a window with. Mommy? Ralphie Jr. asked when I turned around again. Why are you holding a tree stump? It was a long ride home. Apparently, Ralphie Jr. informed me, Ryan couldn't play after all. But at least he'd given Ralphie Jr. what he came for. And that's when I noticed it. A teddy bear. A gray, one-eyed thing with a perpetual frown stitched onto its muzzle like a sick love child of Eeyore and Winnie the Pooh. I wondered if it had bed bugs. Oh, that's... nice. I was at a loss for words. So nice, I'm sure Ryan misses it a lot. We better take it right back, hon. We can't, Buffy explained in a flat, terrified tone that I'd never heard him use before, not even when he was looking at an actual dead guy. Ryan says I have to take Chip for a little while, and I don't want to make Ryan mad. Chip. <laughs> at first the name made me roll my eyes, but then it made me wonder. There was a bit of bead missing from the top of Chip's single eye, giving the gray bear a perpetual, hateful, downturned look. My son was staring into that broken eye like it was a peephole to the darkness beyond the stars or something like that. He took the bear to his room the moment he got home. Probably should have followed him, but dinner wasn't made and the dirty clothes were stacked high enough to be an OSHA violation. What can I say? When you've got nothing to wear to work tomorrow, the laundry takes priority over diabolical stuffed animals. Ralphie Jr.'s room was dark, the door half open when I finally checked on him upstairs. Honey... I shouted. I cut the crusts off your pepperoni sandwiches. Something dribbled on my cheek. I looked up. Ralphie Jr. was dragging himself along the ceiling with his head turned around almost backwards. The teddy bear was clenched in his drooling jaws. I was too terrified to move, but when I opened my mouth, it was my mother voice that came out instead of a scream. Raphael Palumbo Jr., you come down from there this instant! My son did as he was told, but not in the way I imagined. I knew Ralphie Jr. was overweight. I didn't fully understand how bad it had gotten until he dropped onto my head. While Ralphie Jr. gurgled in the language of hell and tried to pull out my eyeballs, I tugged at the teddy bear between his teeth. It was clearly the cause of all this. What had made Ryan jump high and hide so well, when it finally came free, Ralphie Jr. collapsed in an exhausted heap. You're going in the blender, you little shit. I screamed at the bear in a cocktail of rage and fear. It didn't like that at all. Something rippled like flexing muscles beneath the cloth, and the stuffed arm I was holding onto got hot. Hot enough to burn. I yelped and dropped the flaming teddy bear, which crawled around, setting fire to my landlady's carpet. I wondered if this would be covered under my right to bear firearms. I grabbed one of my dead husband's golf clubs and gave chase, but that tiny bastard was fast for his size. A hateful blue glow full of evil intelligence radiated from Chip's single eye, and with a wave of its paw, a dresser flew across the room and nearly smashed my head like a melon. Next thing I knew, I was swinging the golf club like a maniac, playing baseball with my Ikea furniture. I rolled Ralphie Jr. out of the way, ducked beneath a flying desk lamp, and gave that little fucker a hole-in-one straight to the jaw. Four! I yelled as the possessed bear flew backwards into the hall closet. I jammed what was left of my coffee table under the closet door which had started to vibrate with telekinetic force. A blue glow came from inside. Ralphie Jr. was unconscious, but at least he was breathing. I had no idea what to do, so I looked at my phone, and I thought of Andre. My dead mobster husband, Ralph, had kept all his drug dealer contacts in code in the little black book, which I held on to for some reason. Andre had been a part of that world. Was it possible that his number might still be inside? I wasn't worried about the code. Ralph had thought that it was clever, but I cracked it halfway through an episode of Desperate Housewives years ago. That was how I'd been able to send sympathy cards to all his mistresses. It took some finding, and the pounding and smoke from upstairs was really annoying. But before long, I was dialing, and someone picked up. I kept waiting to hear breathing on the other end of the line, but then I remembered that Andre didn't breathe. Andre, I asked, trying to sound sweet, do you remember me? There was no reply, but the sound of my heartbeat, and then, yeah, I wondered what I should say. Something like, wow, you sound great. It's like you barely rotted at all. I decided the truth was the best way to go. I've got a possessed stuffed animal. Do you know anybody who might be interested in something like that? 
a very long pause. Where is the trapped one? The violent, raspy shift in Andre's voice almost made me drop the phone. Uh, in my house. Get out! Then send me the address. We just moved here, I whined. The buyer will compensate you. Andre named a figure. And I decided I didn't like living in a giant cornfield that much after all. What else can I say? Looks like Ralphie Jr. and I are on the road again. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Kiwi Pasta, And as always, I want to tell you thank you so much for watching tonight's video. We're entering into the summer, which means for me, uh, I have horrible allergies. And that means for you, uh, you might not. But hey, I'm going to tell you about this anyway. My wife has a tea shop. It's called Etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea. If you go down into the description, you'll find a link over to it. And hey, there's actually a whole bunch of new teas there available to help you with things like allergies. They've been a hell of a help for me. And if you've been watching me record live on Twitch, then you'll see that I'm not sniffling, at least not as much. And as always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who is on my Patreon. That means everybody. Everyone who is from the $1 tier all the way up to the God, why do you pledge that much tier? But I especially want to give a big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Kyle Resnack, Happy Birthday, Ollie Whale, David Martin, Scarrington the Unkempt, Angelus, Spanky, Snoochie Boochies, Autistic Spidey, Freddy, Seclude, Lupta Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Rebecca Harper, Merxenum, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Cato Baker, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Rob Likes Sharp Things, Chaos Arts, Cryolinian, Zachary Grofius, Lord Life's Best, Goreng Trimagacy, Maria Walker, Pain Gravy, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Aka Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Matt Bach, Naughty Devil, Voice of Sands, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Chelly J, Jeremy H, Rueltazal, Ficomel, Nana, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Sazaku, Croconut 509, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Nicholas Zicardi, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Benjamin Wilvart, Kiri the Sloth, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, you guys are the MVPs. Everybody who's on that list, everybody who's on that Patreon, everybody who's in the description, thank you so much. And if you'd like to join this list of names that I horribly mispronounce, head over to patreon.com slash Pasta. And as always, everyone, sweet dreams. <laughs>